I'm not. I'm not sure what the what the actual like you know violations <laughs> were. What is it? Is there a CEO <laughs> I could talk to or something somewhere? <laughs> How do you have no idea? Uh -oh. Okay, wow. so the dive-in segment here, again, the question of the day, what do you think about social media if they need to be regulated as public utilities? Nigel Farage said that last time he was on. Jordan Peterson said that. This brings us to the topic right now. Jack Dorsey, of course, has been appearing all across yeah. new media. I don't, I don't think we should call it new media anymore, just media. media. Um, yeah, good but media. specifically podcasts, Joe Rogan, Sam Harris, uh, to talk about the companies policies as well as, as free speech. So the problem here is that Dorsey continue, in my opinion, deceives people about Twitter's real policies while dodging <laughs> questions <laughs> and, uh, and, and criticism. Uh, I think a couple things that are important. Jack Dorsey says that he doesn't want echo, that's what he says, he, says he doesn't right. want echo chambers, but it's important to delineate the difference between, I agree, I think all of us would agree that targeted harassment, mm. targeted yeah. libel, something that could result in doxing, physical yep, right. harm, that yeah. has no role on social media because it's a crime in real life, by yeah. the way. Yeah. But that's not the same as an echo chamber. And watch him talk about echo chambers here on, uh, I think this is Joe Rogan. Yeah. yeah. We do incentivize a lot of echo chambers because we don't make it easy for people to- Sounds like he's saying he emphasized, but follow yeah. he sounds slightly topics. Shamed. Okay. So, he feels um, shame. If I follow a bunch of accounts that, like, like Boris Johnson, who was constantly giving me information about reasons to leave. Talk about Brexit. Yeah. I would probably I really only know. see that perspective. Nigel and Farage. If, if yeah, you made those, a mistake, those, you would probably only see one perspective. A lot of folks just yeah. will not follow accounts that have a completely different perspective <laughs> or a different influence. But he's, tur he's a, turned a the whole thing into do. a bubble. Hopefully yeah, journalists right. do. But most people won't do that work. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. And here you <laughs> kind of see the solution there where it's about, he was looking at Garrett, like, why is Garrett doing this just so I know how short the clip is? <laughs> Gavin is very, it's because he can't see outside ah, the brim of your hat. Ah. Um, <laughs> Notice the solution here is always to try and engineer people. It's like, well, people yeah. don't follow people with opposing viewpoints. By the way, we always encourage you to. We always encourage you to read Huffington Post and Salon yeah. and go watch Fox every single day. We tell uh. you to go read the Green New Deal for yourself. So if people make the mistake of not doing that, that's on them. But I find it really interesting that he brings up Brexit. And yeah. he mentions that as an echo chamber. Here's what, here's what he's missing. All of the mainstream media, BBC, and everyone here in the States, all of the news outlets promoted anti-Brexit propaganda. Yeah. It's, by the way, they were so surprised when Brexit happened because yeah. they believed their own lies. And because Twitter and new media was designed to be an alternative platform, what you are seeing are alternatives uh, alternative points of view. That's what I think people yeah. are missing here. Boris Johnson is not more powerful than the BBC, nor is Nigel Farage, but yeah. you get him on Twitter and people are actually able to hear his ideas. They say, well, that's a little bit interesting. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that because I never heard it before. Well, For I, once. Th this ha we do have diversity of ideas here. You, you want people to be able to hear the other side. Basically, what he's saying is not that I don't want diversity of ideas. He's like, I just don't want the ideas I disagree with. He's the well, he's authoritarian. Not saying not there yet, but he, we'll get. To but it. that's his point. What was with the hypocrisy of that statement, though? He's sitting there saying, "I, I, I people get into a bubble and they don't look to, up to other right. views." Meanwhile, hey, you want a different view? Why don't you go look up Gavin McInnes on Twitter or Owen Benjamin on Twitter or Alex Jones on Twitter? So he's censoring people, creating yeah. a bubble, and then saying, "There's this problem where people just get in a bubble; they're too lazy." <laughs> that's a really good point. You're the one. Your your whole thing is a bubble now, dude. Yeah, that's a good point. And here's what's crazy: you know, leftist echo chambers are fine. Right. right. Right-wing echo chambers become hate speech, and now we just, well, let's just not have right-wing echo chambers at all. Let's just get rid of all of the people. By the way, defendgavin.com, so you can go and uh, help him with his fight with yes. the SPLC. New media, everyone was so excited about it when it started. And I remember talking about this yeah. two, three years ago when this was a once a week, three hour show. Everyone was saying, well, there's no barrier to entry now. I said, watch. When you see some conservatives, when you see alternative viewpoints doing well, the sharks are going to come. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. going to see them, particularly from old media, ABC, NBC, CBS, Viacom, right. CNN, right, Turner. You're going to see them go after YouTube, where they cannot win on a level playing field as it relates to viewers, as it relates to content. So how do they win? Money and censoring the opposition. And here we are now. This was the whole purpose to new media, was so that someone like a Boris Johnson or a Nigel Farage could have just as loud of a voice as right. the BBC. Yeah, right. Kevin. We should make it clear too, there, there is such a thing as Nazis. There is yes. a tiny yeah. group of Pepe nut bars who Photoshop you and I with swastikas and gas chambers, and they talk about the JQ and the 14 words and the 88 and all their little jargon stuff. And if you allow those guys into your platform, it tends to be pretty bad for your platform. They tend to just make everyone go, I'm getting out of here. Right. They're sort of like right. the gremlins we were talking about the other yeah. day, but yeah. on the other side. But that's a it's very- It's like letting a bunch of guys crap in the parking lot where everyone's tailgating. Exactly. No one else wants to be there. Right. But those 
those tailgate crappers are a very <laughs> tiny <laughs> sliver, and they're very easy to identify. Right, and yeah. I think Twitter started out doing a pretty good job of getting rid of that tiny minority of lunatic Nazis, maybe like 1% of, of the population, or, or much less, actually, right. half a percent. And then... They, they were normal for a while, and comedians could tell horrible jokes and iron out content, and it's pretty fun. And then, using the justification of the sliver, the tailgate crappers, they started just getting anyone Christian, right. conservative, right. remotely controversial, and now it's kind of the opposite. By the way, the only people I know who use the term nut bar are you and Kevin O'Leary. You know, you're sounding like some kind of a left-wing nut bar. I'm out. That's what it sounds like. By the way, in his interview with Dorsey, actually, Sam Harris who I would actually, I would love to have Sam Harris in the show, but yes. I do find listening to his show sometimes painful. Mm -hmm. yep. It can be very dull. Uh, but it doesn't mean it's not very a good slow. show. I just have to watch it. Sometimes it's out of necessity. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sam Harris pointed out that a liberal feminist, by the way, was banned for saying that men aren't women. Here you go. Megan Murphy, who... She's feminist, but she's not sufficiently woke, apparently, on, on the transgender topic. And she, she wrote a tweet which I believe read, men are not women and got suspended over that tweet. You're suspended right away. And, and yeah. not to tell my own mm -hmm. substory, when there was a clear concerted campaign led by, as you mentioned, white supremacist websites, and of course they're acquiescent liberals on social media, to defame and paint me as a neo-Nazi with fake tweets like gas the Jews, hang the N-words. Twitter, by the way, took no action yeah. to have those false, yeah, none. libelous tweets removed. That's important. That's, they, they said that they're repeated. This is what, it's like the timeline with the FAQ from uh, uh, Cortez. Yeah. It's like, well, yeah. it was the wrong one. You answered questions all day. <laughs> all day long. I made a mistake all day long, okay? What do you want? <laughs> googly, googly. Oh I feel like she, she would fit right in in, in like she Sesame Street in like would. a trash can. Come out like, I'm trying to sleep in here. <laughs> Too cute, Maddie. Bring up the overlay here. The memes, some of them remain up today, by the way. Yeah. The repeated, targeted, yeah. libelous tweets. Trying to destroy the ability for everyone here to make a living uh, didn't violate Twitter's policies. No. And no, by the way, fine. also tried to dox me. It just didn't work. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're still up today. They live in the Silicon Valley echo chamber. That's their echo chamber. And they're like, well, I don't want this point. It's like, I don't irony. want a Brexit like, we echo chamber a or a conservative. Yeah. What, what do you think Mark and Susan yes. would be? Yeah, echo chamber. <laughs> As they hear that. themselves okay. from everywhere. There's it's a like, consensus. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, they, they, they don't understand it. that when they call us white nationalists, white nationalists get pissed. And go, hey, 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 hey we worked cucks. hard on this race thing. <laughs> I hate that cuck. He's always cucking for shekels. He's a race-mixing Jew lover who hangs out with gays. I don't like that guy. And it's sort of like 9-11, too, where they go, 9-11 was an inside job. And the terrorists go, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> We busted our ass on that attack. Right. Taking Martin, down the Twin Towers. Martin Sheen is sitting there like, I'm pretty sure it was, uh, it was Dick Cheney. Dick, Dick Cheney <laughs> with, with some bird shots. It's, by the way, it's especially funny that Jack in that interview, Jack Dorsey, he mentions uh, journalists. He, he specifies the importance ah. of journalists since Twitter goes out of its way to ensure that the hypersensitive leftist journalists don't receive any criticism at all. No. Remember, people who jokingly <laughs> tweeted, mm. learn to code at the journalists were suspended Immediately, yep. record time. Yeah. They were the, gone. Learn, learn to, to code. code. That journalists. The like They're that? banning people for acerbic wit now. Yeah. There's no swear words in that. <laughs> exactly. It's just a very succinct like, and mean thing to say. To it's like if, if if computers existed back in the time of Jack Benny, he'd be like, learn to code. <laughs> it's also good advice. You know, they'd have better job security if they knew how to code. I, is it about <laughs> Jack? Please, we would love to have you on this program. And of course, we would be fair. Is it about? preventing right-wing ideas and or science from spreading, or is it about echo chambers? Let us know. I think another point that uh, people really need to at least, it needs to be illuminated, is the reasons for the bans. Yeah. Uh, because Dorsey's been going around. And I want to know also, by the way, another question, how do you think the interviewers have treated him? I've heard a lot of people complain, saying that they thought he wasn't pressed enough by some of these podcasts, and then some people say that they think it's productive if he's on any podcast at all. Uh, I fall somewhere in the middle. I think it's productive if he's on a podcast, but not if he repeatedly lies and then switches yeah. those lies and said, just kidding, yeah. I had my fingers crossed, yeah. which we'll get to in a little bit. Apparently we went back to nobody, Jack Benny or <laughs> <laughs> I had my fingers crossed. Right. I don't know what's happening. And, and nobody's I, calling him on it. I mean, it's kind of hard to call out the guy who is the gatekeeper, essentially, right? We, That's it, tough. Yeah. But it's hard to call out people. People. Unless you're 60 Minutes, you're so happy to get a huge guest like that. I gotta be honest, if I had Jack Dorsey, I would spend the interview kissing his ass. Really? Yeah. Yes. Probably, I would just... probably physically, and then you would get fired. <laughs> and then I might talk. Have you seen this video of Gavin kissing someone's ass? Like, oh yeah, it's oh, Jack Dorsey. Jack, again. the cheeks. It has like a million plays. <laughs> but if, if you... Somebody Photoshop that, please. 
We're so mentally oh, yeah. obese these days, and we're so bad at conflict that when you get a good guest and you hammer them, you have a back and forth. You'll never get a liberal again. You'll never right. get a famous yeah. person again. Right. So you have to sort of—it's like feeding a squirrel. You have to be like, "Thanks for coming on the show, Jack. Okay, you do your propaganda, and then I'll maybe cast aspersions after you leave." <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Nice. Right. And by, That's true, I think though. it's an important point that kind of segues into the fact that Dorsey repeatedly said that Twitter should have been more clear. Uh, about why people were banned, what the terms of service specify. Oh, here he is explaining it. To realize that we're probably going to make some mistakes along the way, and <laughs> all we can do to like that beard. correct some of that <laughs> is just be open about where we are. And that's probably where we failed angular. the most in the past, is we just haven't been open about our like thinking process, <laughs> um, what led to particular decisions, how our terms of it's service just, evolved. This, this is the go-to. Whenever huh? someone gets banned, it's, well, well, well yeah. if you read the terms of service, you'd know why you were banned. But then if you ask them how a specific person violated the terms of service, they refuse to give an answer. Watch Dorsey do it right here. I'm not, I'm not sure what the, what the actual like, you know, <laughs> violations were, um, but we have, uh, we have a set number of, of actions. Megan oh Murphy. No, when I was banned, it said, tweet, you have been I permanently- I believe read, <laughs> men are not women. The case that you brought up. I'm not sure what's behind I'm that. Just, how do you? I, 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 I don't, uh, don't believe yeah. it. How do you not? How do you one, not know? You're thing. talking about the, the Megan Murphy mm -hmm. "Men Are Not Women" tweet. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. what, is, there, is there a CEO <laughs> I could talk to or something somewhere? <laughs> how do you have no idea? Oh what were we gonna say, you know, Gavin? When I was banned, it said you've been permanently suspended for semicolon space. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? Hmm, the what abyss? The what does that giant what hole mean? They're going to find a reason to, to boot you. It doesn't matter what the terms are. Uh, by the way, hit the notification bell if you're subscribed on YouTube, because apparently subscriptions don't mean anything. Join Mug Clubs to get to the daily show. Uh, Lotofcutter.com slash Mug Club. Subscribe on iTunes for the audio version. Of course, rate it. And uh, by the way, big four-hour Oscars live stream oh, yeah. February oh, 24th no. Torture. at 8 p.m. Eastern. Torture. Drinking game rules to, to be posted. No, the whole point is we watch oh. it so you guys don't have to. And I think Gavin might be at least making an appearance there. At least oh, through this hell night. yeah! Oh, geez, I didn't oh, think you'd be that excited. Very because excited. Honestly, I'm going to be at the Oscars. I was invited. I'm going to be in the front row with sitting with a woman named Penelope Millions. Really? Yeah. This is an actual thing? Yeah, she rescued uh, Harvey Weinstein's daughter from a fire. And, uh, that's what she rescued her from? I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be there for the Oscar for Worst Liar. Okay. All right. <laughs> Here's the thing. The only <laughs> thing that Jack has been consistent about is stressing that harassment campaigns are the most bannable offense. And I think, again, we all agree with that here. Yeah. But we've already seen that those campaigns don't apply to targeted, repeated libel of someone like myself or Gavin, by the way, or a more recent example, uh, the Covington School Kids. Yeah. Celebrities were calling for the kids' addresses, yeah. wanting yeah. them to be harmed because a kid smiled at a toothless meth head who was twice deferred, sorry, twice <laughs> went AWOL as a veteran, was a refrigerator repairman, and was wearing a MAGA hat. Yeah. And the kid just they, they, no one the it. kid. They called for school shootings. They said it would be a great school to shoot up. And, wow. and you know, the wow. right doesn't do that. Like, how many times have, has Dana Lash had to move? How, right, how many yeah. We can't show pictures of our kids. You look at Chris Hayes and Mark Ruffalo, they're all like, here's our kids. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I don't even say my kids' names. Right. Because Plus all their kids, I mean, look retarded. Let's be honest. They all look. <laughs> so Jack Dorsey, he also <laughs> says, uh, by the way, that he hasn't focused. <laughs> We're going to get, Mark Ruffalo seems like the Letters. kind of guy who would call you up for that. He like, will, what's, yeah. what's happening? Did you I don't even know what your kids look like, but if they look like you, they haven't focused <laughs> enough from what he said, Dorsey, on the off-site ramifications of Twitter. Here's a clip. Focused on enough. We haven't focused on the off-platform off ramifications of what happens online. So basically, I didn't even <laughs> need that clip because I told nope. you. That's it. I just <laughs> had the clip <laughs> straight <laughs> here him mouth. saying it. You're right, Jack Dorsey, you haven't, because you've been more worried about journalists receiving slightly mean tweets or people making scientifically accurate claims that might offend, I don't know, 0.5% of the population. By the way, you missed ISIS recruiting, bomb threats, Antifa staging violent assaults on people because you were more worried about a BuzzFeed boldly bitch getting her feelings hurt over a doctor pointing out her BMI of 76. Okay, Ooh. this is what's been happening. Not good. That's We're not. We, we haven't really focused on the offset ramifications. Do you mean like doxing kids from a school with a MAGA yeah, hat? Right. That's in murky territory. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the details yeah, so. of that particular case. I don't know. Case. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna seek my wise counsel. Zuckerberg, Wojcicki, <laughs> somebody. And Cortez probably has private meetings. Yes. I think another point, obviously, is uh, uh, that people need to, to to see here. In certain segments of these interviews, Jack actually kind of lets the mask slip. And the good thing is, we get to see kind of like with the abortion laws, we now get to see the true agenda of Twitter. Where I want Twitter specifically to go is, I you know I I think. It's existential right now that we 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 have global conversations about some things global that 
will become crisis, climate change being oh one of them. There's no <laughs> one nation state that's going to solve that problem alone. Economic disparity Is he being another, for a seat the, in the rise of AI and <laughs> uh, like uh, job displacement, and, and just like us <laughs> offloading decisions to I think these, the to these I don't algorithms, think Americans were really those. puts the world at a disadvantage because it incentivizes more of the uh -huh. echo chambers, which lead to things like nationalism instead of taking the broader picture. Okay, so I, I, I know. That's a, to put it simply, you could write a clickbait headline, okay, that reads, Radical globalist Jack Dorsey now pushing anti-human Green New Deal agenda, and it would be accurate. Yeah, it would be accurate. It wouldn't actually be clickbait. That's what he's saying. <laughs> actually, I think what's important is this in this final clip, uh, Sam, Harris, uh, Sam Harris got Jack Dorsey to admit that they're, they're no longer trying to be neutral. Here he is saying it. I, I, d I don't believe that we can afford to take a neutral stance anymore. Uh, uh, I don't believe Finally, honesty. that we what? should optimize for neutrality. This I do believe that we should optimize for impartiality. And I, I do think there's what? a... What does that mean? There, there I don't know what that means. <laughs> to me, neutral neutrality <laughs> is a lot more passive, a lot more hands-off. I don't think we can just be, um, be this neutral, passive platform. Anymore? Wait, what? Uh, he's just repeating because himself. How long does this clip go? I, I, I'll I'll put yeah, let's just, let's just cancel he's this. He's contradicting himself. He is. We don't want to Badly. be neutral, uh, but we want to be unfair. He's hoping everybody will be asleep. <laughs> we want to ensure yeah. that fairness plays no role on our platform I'm not at sure all. he knows what he's talking about. Well, how did you do an interview with Joe Rogan for four hours? And so I don't know what that <laughs> violation was. And it's really important that we have freedom of speech. And then you go out here and you say, uh, I, don't remember the t I don't remember the timeline, which shows he did. But you would go on shows for hours and say, yeah, yeah, we want it to be a, an open platform for all. And then he yeah. was like, no, we don't. We lie. <laughs> we change like, that. No. Remember Sonia Sotomayor, Supreme Court judge? She yeah. goes, I should be a Supreme Court judge. I'm, I'm totally impartial. I'm going to be a great judge. And then she gets there and she goes, I w we would be lying if we didn't say that our background and our Hispanic heritage didn't affect our decisions. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute. Your job as a judge is to not be a Hispanic woman. Right, yes. To be a, just a, 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 an impartial, you know, judge, justice is blind. And then you have Jack Dorsey going, we are uh, totally neutral here. We're just going to be impartial, let everyone uh, make their own decisions. And we obviously can't be neutral about that. Yeah. <laughs> when we do that, right. it'll be with a left wing bend. And they won, by the way, just because people are getting a message out there of truth. Yeah. That's what happened with Brexit. This idea that it was a lie, a good example. No. You know what a lie is? That some kid harassed a Native American toothless meth head who was twice deferred. <laughs> Sorry, I went AWOL, refrigerator pair man from Vietnam because they had a MAGA hat. That is a lie. Not that there are That's benefits right there. to being an autonomous nation. This is, this is a great example of what we've been talking about all week. The left fears transparency. They run from it. They check under their bed for it. So it's a good indicator. If someone tries to shut down transparency, that they're a leftist or a liar, but I repeat myself. And that's what we're seeing <laughs> with Jack. It's not just Ocasio Cortez. We were just talking about that yesterday. Like, but this, 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 is, this is in your deal. No it's, no, it's not. But you wrote it. I updated the wrong copy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask questions. I know nothing. This is Jack. This is what Jack is doing. Well, hold on a second. What are your, what's going on? Well, really, we should be more clear about our policies. Well, what are your policies? I don't really want to talk about that right now. <laughs> well, what do you think the policy should center on? Well, it should center on being neutral. Okay, so how are you going to be neutral? We don't want to be neutral. Do I need to shoot myself in the head with this, Walther? Because I don't want to get my sponsor into trouble. <laughs> if you want to know what Silicon Valley is, just picture Bernie, Cory Booker, Ocasio Cortez sitting in a boardroom deciding what can and cannot be said on the internet. That's what Silicon Valley is. The politicians, the far left politicians, I should say, are just like the Silicon Valley tech executives. They use nice words like transparency, truth, safety, but whenever you ask them questions, they run for cover. You saw the same thing with Zuckerberg yeah. uh, when he had to testify. Uh, when you, you saw the same thing with Wojcicki. Remember back then? She's like, well, I think it's important that we have a neutral. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, but we don't want hate speech. What's hate hmm. speech? I have another meeting. I got to get to go. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> when you start shining a light on these guys, they scurry back into the darkness. That's why there's no accountability. When we explain where we line up here uh, on every issue, and we're really clear, Jack, okay, Jack, we're not trying to attack you. We just want to put all the cards on the table. That's all we're asking yeah. for you. Let's not even get to the public utilities debate. But we just, we've all agreed, we all agreed, we talked about this yesterday, we, we, you have to be honest about your business practices. Yeah. You can't say we weren't clear about the terms of service, and then we say, well, what are the terms of service? And, you know, I don't know, I don't mm. even know. Bleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what it can be. We just want to know where everyone stands on these platforms. But instead, they flip over the table and they throw the cards away. That's what Silicon Valley is. Ocasio-Cortez, Kamala, now I'm doing it affected. 
Ocasio Cortez. No, Ocasio Cortez. I just want to say it in American. <laughs> Camila Cor- Harris, Cortez. Cory Booker in a boardroom. That's what it is. And now that you know, you just have to play by their rules or get kicked off the platform. Hey, social media, let freedom ring. Hey there, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel or hit the notification bell. Do it. Oh, wait a second. Do you hear that little ding? It actually didn't make a ding sound. I just did it. It happened while my mouth was doing it, and you thought it was coming from your computer. Uh, so that's fun. Also, there's some videos playing in these boxes next to me. Go watch those. You might enjoy them. You might not. I don't care.